Well, we're back to the virtual volumetric efficiency table, and today we're trying a new tuning approach. Stick around. This video is intended for educational purposes only. Improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle. Attempt custom tuning at your own risk. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. Sorry if it's a little bit dark in here and sorry if the audio kind of sucks. I'm not mic'd up for this process. This is going to be a lot of tuning condensed down. We're not going to so much record any of the data log stuff whenever I'm out logging because it is virtual volumetric efficiency, but I wanted to go through the steps and, and show you the approach that I'm taking that's a little bit different. We are tuning zone by zone by zone instead of doing a big uh, pressure uh, VE table layout. I've got my scanner opened up here and I'm going to show you my different zone setups where I literally come in here and I created a zone for every zone. If you were to go over and look at the VVE table and click it over into show zone numbers here, each one of these zones is its own separate little table in the scanner. And so what we're doing is we're collecting data on individual zones, even though we're collecting data for the entire uh, table. And you'll notice there's some small differences between the entire table and the individual tables because of the way that interpolation happens in these cells that we're not hitting outside of these zones. So where we might be, be at 700 RPMs, it is flipping between the 600 box and the 800 box all the time. And you see kind of a blend of those two on the main table, whereas if we were to go down to zone zero, in, in particular, we would be looking at like 12 to 14 where we have a zone boundary. Zone zero cuts this boundary off at 1200. That data at 1300 is not being logged in this table. The same way if we went over to zone six where it's at 1400, that is cut off at 1400. So that 1300 RPM data is not being captured like it is on the major table. The reasoning behind that is that data is skewing those cells in theory. I have not really proven this out. I've just started this. This is a trial kind of run situation where we're going to see if the VVE table falls in line quicker. The big thing that I want to show you though is if we go into the graphs layout, I want to show you how my math works and we will look at, let's go out to like zone 12 here. This is all the filtering that I'm doing to make sure that everything is only information from that zones. And so you see, this is our RPMs right here. And that's saying that RPMs have to be less than 3,400 and, and being the, the big word there, we have to use and qualifiers. So all of this is true to get data and RPM has to be above 2,600. And on top of that, this is our pressure ratio math. We need the pressure ratio to be uh, less than 0.3 in this situation. If we were to go down to zone 13, you'll see that this changes and we actually have pressure ratio between 0.034 and 0.066. That is what narrows down our information to show, show that we're only capturing data in these zones. So I'm going to go ahead, get the truck warmed up and go out and start logging this information. And as I said, I'm just going to record while we're doing the updates because it's virtual volumetric efficiency. We got to put a lot of miles on. It's just a lot easier. And you guys don't necessarily care to just watch me drive around for, you know, 15 minutes. So uh, stick around. I'll be right back. Okay, so we've just gone out. We literally went down and, and filled the tank back up with some corn, but we got a data log in here. So we're going to scroll through our zones here. Let me go ahead and disconnect. Scroll through our zones here. There's our first zone that we've got any data. We're going to use the overall table as an indication of how everything looks as we get things dialed in. You can see where we're still getting rich down underneath boost which is fine, we're starting to work that down. It used to be a lot worse way down in there. In fact, let's go back to here, see where we got to. Duty cycles are looking a lot better. We're hitting that six millisecond uh, limit, but we are still very rich, you know? So we're gonna, that's gonna go down as we pull this fuel out of the stock fuel system and let the secondary system do the lifting. Uh, it said, not getting crazy on the boost, but we're just gonna go down here, scroll through the zones till we find data and then we'll copy the whole table. We're at 426, so let's go into 426. We'll do the standard thing where we select the upper left-hand block of that zone, multiply by percentage half. 
Something to keep in mind, these zones, let's go ahead and calculate this one, it's not gonna make a huge difference. These zones can only uh, have a certain shape to them. They can be domed or, you know, curved, con concave. You can't have an S form in these things. The math is not gonna allow you to do that. So you need to keep an eye on these different shapes to make sure that they conform to that mentality. You know, this is all math on the back side of it. And so we're looking for these domes and valleys like this that are smooth transitions on every zone as we go through and make the adjustments to these zones. And we can see that in the numbers. If we raise this side up, this side came up. This side down here, uh, if it's concave or convex, will shift accordingly to make the math work out. So keep that in mind. That's how you end up breaking zones. Zone two, got a lot of data, but very good looking data. We're getting really close. So that's 400 uh, versus 70. So we'll paste that right there. And you can calculate after each one if you want to, you don't have to, but it's it doesn't matter because we're doing zone by zone. It's not gonna drift over into another zone and necessarily cause issues like it does. Uh, that's the nice thing about doing it with this approach. Now, whether or not it'll work in the long run to actually make the table look better, I don't know. That's why we're doing this. That's why we're going to go through here, see what all zones that we have data in and copy those over. So we're down to zone seven, 14 and 34. So if we come back over, let's go to 14. We'll highlight 34. Here's 14. Multiply that by half. Zone eight, we'll have some data. 14 and 70. So that one's easy to find because it starts right there. You can see the delineation of the zones pretty quick and pretty easy the more that you do this. This is about the third time I've made adjustments using this approach. 14, 102. So there's 102 and there's 14. Zone 10, no data, 11, no data, 12, no data, 13, 14. 15, we start getting into rich stuff. So we're at 26 and 102. So let's highlight 102, follow 26 down, find our cell. And this is the only thing that you gotta be careful of because if you accidentally shift one cell over or something, you're gonna ruin your data. So just pay attention, 26, 150. I find it's easy to highlight the rows. That helps me zone in on where this data needs to be adjusted. 17 nothing and we might get into zone 22 here just barely just touch zone 22 36 150 so highlight 150 we'll fall 36 down it's right here and there we go so we've got all this new data in let's go ahead and calculate our coefficients see what our table looks like nice and smooth that's the nice thing about this it doesn't get quite jaggedy whenever we do it this way compared to doing the entire uh, copy and paste and I find that I don't have to do as much smoothing I can just use the math the, the uh, calculate coefficients math and it tends to make everything look better because it's not worried about that data in between those two uh, cutoff points uh, for the zones so I'm going to save this one in load it in Let's take one more look at the entire picture here, see kind of what it's looking at. And some of the big stuff we're looking at is down in this 2000 to 2600 range. See if that's leaning out nicely, and then we'll follow up from there. Okay, so we just got out, did another log. This is the old log. And as I said, we want to focus kind of in on this 2400 RPM. And in particular, you can see down here, we're 12%, 6%. Let's go over and look at our new one. And here's the same area. So we are down to, you know, four, seven, four, six percent total. So it is falling in line down there. Uh, that is what we're very interested to see. And down in here, we're looking really good in some of these zones. The nice thing about it is by breaking these zones out, as we scroll through these zones, if we find one that's good, that's got really good data on it, we don't necessarily have to copy that over. I'm going to do this one because it's got a couple spots in vacuum that it is getting lean, but like this data is looking really good. As, as we finish this zone out, zone two, we're probably going to get to the point where we just don't update zone two anymore. And then we can focus on just the zones that have significant shifts on them. So let's go in to our tune. Let's open up our volumetric efficiency again, and let's go ahead and make our changes. I'm going to close out the old log so I don't get confused. And 
Zone one, no data. Well, there's zero, so it's perfect in that cell. Zone two, just a little bit. We'll copy this one in. And that was four, 470. Let me double check that one. Yep, 70, 470. Bingo. Zone three's got a couple bad cells in there. We'll copy that one over. And that was 400-102, so right here. And we've got a little bit of offset in this area right here. And honestly, let's calculate and see what happened to those two cells. Okay, they, it brought those two cells up and put them in line. So that actually worked nicely for the two cells that we didn't hit in that area. So no need to smooth interpolate any of that stuff. Okay, zone 7, 14, and 34. Let's go ahead and find 34. We'll fall 14 down. Multiply that by half. Zone 8 will be the one right below it. 14 and 70. All right, cheer. Multiply that by half, and we're just going to keep on moving down the list here and trying to get this thing dialed in. You know if you've done any virtual volumetric efficiency tuning that this takes multiple steps. It is a long drawn out process. And generally the old way, uh, in fact, I'm, I'm on step, uh, I don't know, 13, 16, around step 16. And that is keeping in mind, this is only the third step that I've done with the zones. The other ones I did just standard adjustments, smoothing, stuff like that. So 26 and 34. So let's find 34, 26. Twenty six and seventy. Got some sporadic data in here. Here's seventy. Twenty six. And you can see I'm trying to do this without doing any interpolation, smoothing, anything like that. Trying to keep it as simple as possible as we go through these steps. Twenty six one oh two. Be right here. Zone 16, 26, 150. And then we've got a rich spot at 36, 74. Let's find our 74. We'll follow 36 down right here. Pay special, multiply by half. That should bring everything else around it down a little bit. And then 36,150. Thirty-six one fifty Should fall in line with our other stuff. Yep, sure enough. Then 36,202. Very rich down there. 202. We got into a little more boost this time. 36,202. Six graphs layout should be out to 29 zones, so I need to remove some stuff on here so I can find it on the table. Not worried about math right now. Okay, 27, 28, 29. Okay, that's in. So let's go ahead and flip over. Let's look at it. You can see some spikes in there from changes that we made, but as soon as we calculate them, boom, they go away. Everything stays smooth. Looks good. I'm going to do this a few more times, uh, two or three more times. I'm going to do it two or three more times on my own. Then I'll come back, bring you guys in, and show you kind of the steps and the incremental changes and whether or not it's gotten better. So I'll see you here in a bit. Okay, so we've gone out and we've done, oh, I don't know, probably six, five or six logs. And I've got the original one pulled up here where we can kind of see what's been going on. We can see how rich we were. Uh, and in fact, we really weren't able to get past 14 PSI. Now, granted, I've got belt slippage on here, and I'm pretty sure I've already glazed this belt because there's not enough tension on it. So I've had, the thing's just not wanting to build more than about 16 PSI right now, 17 maybe. Uh, so I've got a, a new grip tech or sure grip uh, pulley on the way. 
that will hopefully fix that along with a smaller heavy duty belt. But we can still look at where we were compared to where we are now. And the, the key things to kind of take a look at right now are, uh, there's a couple lean spots that's developed out in here, but if we go out into where we've been very rich, I mean, we're looking real good, like four, three percent, five, six percent maxing out, whereas beforehand in the same zones, I mean, we were going up seven, eight percent. We had one spot that looked decent, but other than that, like right here in the 22 to 26, we were so rich. Uh, and we're actually a little bit on the lean side, but there might be some transient uh, fueling where the EQ is not really catching up through that zone. So if we look at it manually, let's come back a little bit and show. Yeah, we're, we're just getting a little lean. We're at one there and then instantly we go to 0.85 or so, 0.9, 0.9. So it's taking the system a little bit of time to catch up to our commanded, at least our reading, but then we're getting down to it and actually overshooting it. So that could just be that we're ramping into PE too quick. So that's something to keep in mind. This area down here is stuff that we've never gotten into before. If you look on this one, we didn't really touch anything in that range. Maybe this 24. Uh, 24 we're still a little bit rich there but we're actually touching new cells and that's why those are rich so those would be starting to get picked up in the next tune around cruising this is the area that we're around cruising and that is for except for one cell right there we are spot on whereas beforehand around cruising yeah we were still pretty good in there a little rich off of cruising then a weird lean spot at the 1000 to 1200 range that is starting to smooth out Remember, I'm applying these changes and doing nothing else. The only thing that I have done, besides just literally copy and paste by half, is there's a couple ridges that have been built up around this area. And you can kind of see one right there still that I have interpolated across. That is a zone threshold. That's how you recognize zone thresholds. And there's a real bad one over in here in the higher RPMs that I've kind of smoothed out. But... Here's our primary fueling area, and then as we get down in here, this is where secondary fueling, this, this bowl is secondary fueling, and then we're coming into, uh, basically, as I said, we've ran out of boost because we're getting pulley slip. There's belt residue all over the place. So normally we would begin, be getting down into this area, and it would start flattening out and would fall in line with this stuff. This is old data that I just built to make sure that we were rich on the top end, so we're not able to break this 2.0. And in fact, if we look at our current scan, and uh, let me put the uh, graphs back on, or the gauges back on over here, not gauges, doop -doop -doop, sorry, graphs, uh, let's do chart versus time. And we look in this area, why do I not have boost on here all of a sudden? Let's add boost back in. Let's go down here, airflow boost. There we go. And it's in KPA. Let's put it in PSI. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so there we go. We're getting up to 15, 15 PSI at 4,200. If you go back a couple videos, whenever we first started this, we were hitting uh, 20 PSI at this point in time. So that is just a clear indication uh, that we're not building as much boost as beforehand. And in fact, if we come back over here, let's go further over to where we're not in boost. This boost curve should be more closely following the RPM curve. And in fact, let's go and look at one real quick. Let me see if I can find an older one here. Let's close this out. Let's do it this way. And let me open up an older log from about, it's from the 11th. Let's see what our boost curve looks like here. And that's still not a good one. Probably still had some belt slip there. Back. Try the eighth. Here we go. This one. The scaling. Let me change the scaling. 
so you can see what I'm talking about. Let's go negative 10 up to 30. Okay, there we go. So looking at the green line that is our boost, it should follow our RPMs here. And this is a good example. So we're at 3,000, we're at 10, and then we're getting up to about 4,000, and we shoot past 15, and by 5,000, we're at 20 PSI. Whereas I said, on our most recent log, you can see that it is trailing off. Things don't look as good on the boost side. And see how it is falling below RPM here. So as we go up 3,000, we're not quite to 10 where we were at 10 last time. 4,000, we're at 12. We were probably at 16. And so you can see that we're not making quite the boost that we were. Just an indication of pulley slip. But I am uh, pretty happy with how the tuning is going. The tables still look pretty good. There's a few table transitions, but overall the VE table is staying smooth. We're seeing the correct uh, uh, crests, you know, the correct peaks and the correct valleys uh, to kind of keep all of the math happy as we go through this process. So I'm going to keep on doing it this way. Probably wait a couple days till we get the other belt in, possibly the other pulley. And because uh, we're just not, we're kind of hitting a plateau on where we're tuning. We're not tuning the areas that we need to. We need to get down uh, past the 2.0 on the pressure ratio into that uh, higher boost range. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at for today. But I wanted to update you. Let me know what you think of the process. If you think it makes sense, if it looks like it's been beneficial or, is, or it's helping. And we'll go in a little bit more in depth on the next one. Specifically, what I've been seeing is uh, the areas where we're in idle, we're jumping around too much or cruising, we're jumping around too much because the tune before this one, if we open that one up, let's go back one to 18. This one is almost spot on in cruising, just AFR, the Lambda, is just one the whole time. Looks great. Uh, just maybe one cell was a little bit off. Changing that one cell affects that whole zone like we talked about, and that's skewed off where we were good because of one cell. And so that might be something where we need to dial into that one cell, look at the data around it, and how we can manipulate that data around it to not so drastically shift everything over here while we're just changing that one cell. So. Uh, I got to get back to it. You guys know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. ABT, always be tuning.